Hey guys, this is John from US Dash Camera. So today I got another Surface video. Now this will probably be my last Surface video because I don't like to stray far from the Dash Cam related stuff too much, but you know I use this for my video editing and everything now and I take this on the road with me too so I really love this Surface Pro 4 and I wanted to do a quick update video on my favorite accessories for this. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the obvious ones first. And of course check down below in the description for any affiliate links if you're interested in any of these items. So this is the official Surface Dock. This is the newest version which came out with the Surface Pro 4. And it is pretty pricey. A lot of people were turned off by the price because it's $200 MSRP. But right now you can get it from around $160 to $170. I believe I paid 160 on Amazon. There you can see there's a power input, an ethernet jack, a headphone port or speakers, two display ports, and two USB, and two USB on the front. And these are all USB 3.0, which is really nice. This plugs into the side of the surface and connects everything together. So this isn't just a typical dock though. This does actually have a pretty big power brick as you'll see. So. There's a reason why this thing is so expensive. With the display port, uh, you can actually connect two 4K monitors. I don't have 4K monitors, just one 1080p, but I haven't had any issues with it. Some people have talked about having issues. I just bought a random display port cable, and I'll provide a link down to that too, a white and black one, and they both work fine for me. So I think this thing is really worth it for a desktop-like experience. So of course, on the go, I use the official keyboard. This thing is a must-have. It's pretty pricey at $130, but it actually feels really, really nice, like almost as good as any real laptop keyboard, I would say. And the actual trackpad is nice too. But for a desktop environment, I really like this keyboard. It's a Microsoft ergonomic keyboard. It is wireless. The wrist rest is really soft and comfortable. The keys all feel really nice. Some people don't like the split design, but the reason I got it actually was because my wrists were starting to get sore writing in such a awkward position and I really like having my arms or wrists set an outward angle with this split style design. So it's really helped me when working for long hours or extended periods of time. What I also really like is the stand and the battery cap is actually magnetic. There you can see the little wireless receiver. This does use a RF receiver, not Bluetooth. So you would need to connect this to your Surface or your Surface dock. And then we have this separate detached number pad. Now both the main keyboard and this have the piano black finish that gets pretty dirty, which is a little annoying, but this uh, separate number pad uses a watch style battery and I actually like it detached. I didn't at first, but Sometimes I like to move the numpad around my desk, so I really like it now. So sometimes I connect my Surface to my TV in the living room, and this is the keyboard I really love to use in the living room. I did a short review on this earlier, so I'll provide a link down below to it, but I really like this because it has the trackpad and the mouse click buttons. There you can see it charges with micro USB, and there's actually a mouse click button on the top left also. Personally I never use that though. So it feels really sturdy. It's a little pricier than some of the other Logitech keyboards but what's really cool about this one is it supports Bluetooth or Logitech's RF unifying receiver so if you don't have Bluetooth or for whatever device you're using you can use this little dongle also. So I think that's really cool. I'll provide a link down to other cheaper alternatives also. So now another device I have reviewed before is the UAG or Urban Armor Gear case. I also just recently posted a video on how to get this thing out because it can be pretty difficult. But what's really nice about this case is besides the fact that it offers quite a lot of protection, it does have a stand. Now the stand is pretty loud and clicky so some people complain about that but it does the job that it needs to do so I don't really mind and it actually does fit the keyboard also so that snaps right on and then there's a little bungee on the top right that will actually hold the keyboard shut so 
I really like this case. I've checked out a few others and this one's still my favorite. I don't always use it, but if I have to take it out in the field, I always have it with me, so I can always throw it on quickly. So now I'm going to cover different mice. Now I am pretty much obsessed with testing different keyboard and mice, and these are my three, three favorite mice. This is the G700 Logitech Gaming Mouse, and what's really cool about this is it has so many buttons. I really like this for work for if you use something like AutoCAD or MicroStation all the different keys on this is really awesome and you can use it wired or wireless so when you connect the USB cable it actually operates over the wired connection but also charges this so it is wireless if you want it to be wireless unfortunately the G700 doesn't have Bluetooth so I tried picking up this MX Master by Logitech and this mouse is really cool. It supports up to three different devices. You can see one, two, and three. It works on completely clear glass and it supports Bluetooth or the unifying receiver. So if you really wanted to, you could use this on multiple devices including your phone, a tablet, or a computer that doesn't have Bluetooth with a unifying receiver. Where the G700 actually uses the G-Series gaming receiver so it's not compatible with the unifying receiver. Well, this side scroll wheel is really cool and really comfortable, and this mouse feels probably more comfortable than any other mouse I've used. It does have some disadvantages. It doesn't have nearly as many buttons as the G700, so it does have this bottom button and then also these two buttons here, but the top button is really small and hard to push. Now, I was originally going to bring this with me wherever I go but it's too big. I like to use it at home now, but I got this MX Anywhere 2, which you can see has the same style or design, but it's a much more compact mouse. It doesn't have a side scroll wheel, but of course it has a high quality top scroll wheel, and it's just overall way easier to use on the go. It also supports all of the same features as the MX Master, so here you can see 1, 2, and 3 again. Supports three devices. Supports Bluetooth or the unifying receiver again. So it really is the ultimate portable mouse. So now I got a DVD drive. Now a lot of people might not need this, but I thought it was a great deal. It was only $20 on Amazon at the time of purchase. And what's really cool, it just plugs into the USB port. And, you know, I have a bunch of old games. Instead of pirating them or rebuying them, I I really want to just buy this $20 DVD drive and load up some of my old games. So this actually comes in multiple colors. Here I got the blue to match my keyboard, but there's also a red that will match the red surface keyboard, and I believe there's two other colors. Now I also got another little USB hub. This is the Anchor brand. Now I specifically picked this one actually because once again it matches my surface. Here you can see it matches the color of the actual device and actually the USB 3.0 ports match the blue keyboard so I thought that was pretty cool it matched my surface pretty much precisely now you can always go the cheaper route and save a few bucks with something like this insignia brand USB hub but this one was only USB 2.0 while the anchor one was actually or is actually all USB 3.0 and it doesn't require a separate power cord like this Insignia one does. So I would say just spend the extra five bucks or ten bucks or whatever for a nicer one like this Anchor one. I think it's worth it. So this is something that I debated whether or not I was going to put in, but I still use USB drives once in a while. Typically I use my uh, OneDrive or Google Drive and Dropbox sometimes also, but I really loved this design. This was only like $16 or something like that for 64 gigabytes. I was originally going to buy a Samsung one, but it was twice the price. And this one has a really nice metal design, feels really sturdy, and it is USB 3.0. So it's something really nice to just throw on your keychain, especially if you don't have internet access for whatever reason and need to transfer some files. So this is the official Surface Pro pen tip kit. 
Now if you buy the new Surface Pro 4 pen, this will actually come with it, but you can buy it for about $10 on Amazon or wherever else. And this is for those drawers out there or people that want a different feel to the pen. So I really like the tip that came with the original pen, but I figured I'd just try this out. The reason I'm opening this right now is because I accidentally pre-ordered it on Amazon and forgot then bought it in store the same day it came out. So I ended up with a second one. But there you can see, it comes with four extra different pen tips and they really give a different feel to the pen as it writes on the screen. I typically just use the one that came with it though, but it's only $10 and it's nice once in a while to switch between them. So now this last part isn't really an accessory, but I wanted to talk about Office 365. Now this is for those business people out there or people who use Office a lot. Now, I'm going to be demonstrating this on a Galaxy Note 4, but with Office 365, some of these features, syncing with OneDrive and OneNote are really cool, and I think more people should know about these features. So here I'm going to quickly demonstrate on my Galaxy Note. You can see I have the different Office apps on here, Skype, OneNote, uh, Outlook, OneDrive. And then I also have this Office Lens. So this is a scanning app basically where I'm going to take a picture of this Jovu X manual and it will save it as a document. Then I can upload it to my OneDrive or I can upload it to OneNote which is what I'm going to do. So once I upload it to OneNote I'll actually show you in a few minutes how it will actually sync to the cloud and then I can access it from my surface. Here you can see I actually uploaded a few things a few minutes ago while I was testing this. The video didn't turn out well so I redid it. Another thing actually what's really cool about the OneNote app on Android or iOS is it's pretty convenient that you can just take notes like here I have a grocery list so let's say I want I want to add bologna to the grocery list I have on here already I don't know how to spell bologna so let's let's turn that into ham instead because I can never remember how to spell bologna so there we go ham going to save that and now we're gonna switch over to my surface pro of course, you can actually just edit any of your documents that are saved to your OneDrive from your phone. But let's quickly go over here and check out my Surface Pro. You'll see I have Roller Coaster Tycoon and some of the videos I've been working on on my desktop. Now I'm going to go to my OneDrive or my OneNote. Now, once I open it, it does have to sync, and I am going to edit this out, but once it syncs, it only takes two seconds. You can see ham was added to it. And here on the right side, we got the Jovu X manual. So it typically works better with flat sheets of paper, but either way, it's really cool and lets you save documents really quickly. And with OneDrive, you can edit your documents from any computer, any phone or tablet, and it'll sync across all devices. So you don't have to just add something like ham like I did. You can actually edit the original document and see the whole document at once and make changes, but I really like that ability to just add stuff to a list like a grocery list or a shopping list. So anyways, I hope this video was useful for you. Um, if you guys have any recommendations or any accessories that you think are great, tell me down below. I love testing out new accessories. You know, part of the main reason why I started this channel was to test different consumer electronics. So again, Post some comments down below. I'll read all of them. I try to respond to as many as I can. And of course, like I said earlier, I will provide affiliate links to all the products shown in this video. They do help support this channel, so if you are interested in any of them, check them out down below. And of course, if you like this video or my other videos, hit like and subscribe. As usual, drive safe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.